Today, we are going to be discussing what velocity architecture is and why it's so crucial for the Xbox Series S and X. Let's get into it. What is up guys and welcome back to yet another brand new Major Ben video and today we're going to be taking a deep dive and a look into what Velocity Architecture does and why it's so important for Xbox. So grab those snacks guys, relax, kick your feet up. This is going to be another in-depth video here today. So today we're going to start off with Jason Ronald and what he has said about the Series X and how they design Velocity Architecture. This is what he had to say. When we set out to design the Xbox Series X, we aspired to build our most powerful console ever, powered by next generation innovation and delivering consistent, sustained performance never before seen in a console with no compromises. To achieve this goal, we knew we needed to analyze each component of the system to push beyond the limitations in traditional console performance and design. It was crucial in the design of the Xbox Series X to ensure we had a superior balance of power, speed, and performance while ensuring no component would constrain the creative ambition of the world best creators, empowering them to deliver truly transformative next-gen gaming experiences not possible in prior console generations. I do just want to say quickly this is really really awesome and crucial that they are pushing the boundaries of what the tech can do so that these developers really can put their true dreams into a game and make it happen with Xbox. Jason Rodder went on to say at the heart of the Xbox Series X is our custom processor leveraging the latest RDNA 2 and Zen two architectures from our partners at AMD to deliver a best-in-class next-generation processor delivering more than 12 teraflops of GPU power and more than four times the CPU processing power of the Xbox One X. If you do want to see a video explaining and talking about RDNA 2, there is one here on my channel. So please do go check that out and let me know what you think of that one too. He then went on to say Xbox Series X includes the highest memory bandwidth of any next-generation console with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, including 10 gigabytes of GPU optimized memory at 560 gigabytes per second to keep the processor fed with no bottlenecks. As we analyzed the storage subsystem, it became clear that we had reached the upper limits of traditional hard drive technology. And to deliver on our design aspirations, we would need to radically rethink and revolutionize our approach with the Xbox Series X. So this is also so true. So Microsoft knew at this point they could just not use anything like the standard hard drives that they've been using previously and they would have to use a blazing fast SSD to keep up with the ginormous worlds that the next generation of games will be bringing. As we all know these modern games require a significant amount of data to create such an immersive realistic experience to the player. To enable this to work they would not be able to use slow traditional storage devices. All of these textures for these worlds would have to be loaded from the storage into the graphics memory in the smallest possible amount of time. We don't get things like long load times and also random pop in from objects and textures in the distance. Very much like we got in the Halo trailer, which was very disappointing to see. Clearly Microsoft hasn't even been using this architecture themselves sometimes. Despite the ability for modern game engines and middleware to stream game assets into memory off of local storage, level designers are still often required to create narrow pathways, always or elevators to work around the limitations of the traditional hard drives and the IO pipeline. So much like games like God of War and Jack and Daxter for example, they use things like winding roads or long boat trips so that there are no loading times. If you ever wondered why in God of War there's that boat trip, that is because it is actually loading in the next part of the map as it couldn't do this quick enough to go from one place to another instantaneously. So this wasn't necessarily what the game developers wanted. They may have actually not wanted any boat trip in, in God of War for example but they had to put something there if they wanted to eliminate these load times. So this actually leads us onto the velocity architecture today that we're going to be talking about and why this kind of stuff is so important. The Xbox velocity architecture was designed as the ultimate solution for game asset streaming in the next generation. This radical reinvention of the traditional IO subsystem directly influencing all aspects of the Xbox design is just genius. The velocity architecture comprises of four major components 
components. The custom NVMe SSD hardware accelerated decompression blocks, a brand new direct storage API layer, and sampler feedback streaming. Let's discuss each one individually and talk about what it is. So the custom SSD is a one terabyte NVMe SSD delivering 2.4 gigabytes of raw IO throughput. This is more than 40 times the throughput of the Xbox One storage. This SSD is designed to have consistent and sustained performance as opposed to a peak performance due to thermal problems, for example. So for example, like the PlayStation 5's GPU and CPU, they have a boost mode, which means that they are not constantly hitting it. If the GPU needs more, the CPU will have to reduce. Now, Xbox is designed around this kind of stuff. So if the SSD needs more, it doesn't matter. The SSD is constantly running at its peak capacity, the same as the graphics card and the CPU in the Xbox Series X. So this gives the developers a guaranteed level of IO performance at all times, and they can reliably design and optimize their games without having random drops in performance at all. Then we have the hardware accelerated decompression. Game packages and assets are compressed to minimize download times with the amount of storage required for each individual game. With hardware accelerated support for both the industry standard LZ decompressor, as well as a brand new proprietary algorithm specifically designed for the textured data named BC Pack. Xbox Series X provides the best of both worlds for developers to achieve massive savings with no loss in quality or performance. So this is very useful as textures in games take up a significant amount of storage and are the main portion of the overall size of the game. Having this purpose-built algorithm optimized for texture data in addition to the LZ decompressor, both can be used together to reduce the overall game size, which is great for us as the consumer. We always need games with smaller sizes these days as the one terabyte drives we get with the consoles really do fill up quick and only a 500 gigabyte SSD on the Xbox Series S which is really really disappointing there but games like Call of Duty are potentially going to be taking up 500 gigabytes so you're going to actually have to have that expansive SSD on the Series S soon so if we assume a 2 to 1 compression ratio Xbox Series X actually produces a 100 times the IO performance compared to the Xbox one. This is an insane jump and just absolutely incredible. Due to the file storage technology being so advanced, the only standard file IO APIs needed changing as the current ones have been virtually unchanged for 30 years. Microsoft added a brand new direct storage API empowering them to establish multiple IO queries, prioritization and minimizing IO latency. Microsoft added a brand new direct storage API empowering them to establish multiple IO queries, prioritization and minimizing IO latency. These direct low level access APIs ensure developers will be able to take full advantage of the raw IO performance afforded by the new hardware, resulting in close to no load times or very, very extreme fast travel systems that are instantaneous. We then also have sampler feedback streaming. This is a new innovation built on top of all the other advancements of the Xbox Velocity architecture. Game textures are optimized at different levels of detail and resolution called mip maps can be used during rendering based on how close or how far away an object is from the player. As an object moves closer to the player, the resolution of the texture must increase to provide the crisp detail and visuals that we all expect. So essentially this prioritizes the textures that are directly in front of us. So if you are playing a racing game, for example, the car would be prioritized over a tree further away in the distance, which makes sense, right? You want to see these crisp, nice textures prioritized on the things that are closer to you. So what does all this stuff we've talked about in this video so far mean to us gamers and what does it do and how does it affect us when we're sitting behind the TV? Well, this will allow things like larger worlds as there will be no slowdown on load times, higher resolution textures in games, potentially worlds that are larger than we've ever seen on any game before because so much can be rendered in at one time. This really literally is a game changing feature. A lot of this kind of stuff might not be here in the next few years as a lot of the developers are still adjusting to this new technology and haven't had the chance to use this to its full extent yet. But over the years, we will start seeing this utilized more and more and games will get bigger and better all the time. Also, we are already seeing some of these benefits in progress with things like the quick resume feature, which enables you to quickly resume between multiple games all the time. This feature, by the way, is absolutely insane, guys. If you haven't got a Series X yet, the fact that you can switch between like six different games 
consistently all the time, even if you unplug your Xbox Series X, is game changing. When I go back to playing my PS5, I miss that feature like crazy. And all this kind of stuff would only be possible with velocity architecture and the blazing fast components that make up the Xbox Series X. So to round off this video, velocity architecture is a very important part of the Xbox Series X and S and shouldn't be overlooked. It may not have a huge impact on the current games right now, but this is going to be a potentially eight year generation that we're talking about here with Series S and X. This architecture will help to keep both of these systems future proof for all the years to come. The Series X and S are both beasts of machines and it's exciting to see what lies ahead for both of these consoles. Thank you so much guys for watching my video. I hope that you have enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing and using the bell icon next to that subscribe button to stay notified for my latest videos. I do have a Discord server in the description along with my Twitter and Instagram if you would like to follow me there and interact with me in the community we are building here on this channel. But thank you for watching guys. I really do appreciate it every time you guys watch one of my videos. It means the world to me and makes me feel so positive and happy. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for viewing my video. Bye bye for now.